painting tutorial for my Necron army. My Necron army is almost finished, so I've only got one unit left to paint, and that's the Wraith. So I'll be showing you how to paint one of those today. Here's one that I've already finished. That's the outcome that we're going to get. So I'm going to show you exactly how to paint this miniature, and you can apply this technique to the whole Necron army, all the warriors and infantry units, the vehicles, flyers. It's the same technique throughout. And if you want to see how I've applied that, then check out my showcase videos that shows you each unit how it's been done all with uh, HD images and video so you'll be able to see exactly how the technique has been applied now with the Necrons I wanted to paint a class classic Necron style uh, some paint ceramics for Necrons or other color schemes but I wanted to emphasize the metal wanted to look like machines and then the green really helps make them look eerie and look like alien machines so that combination of the green and of the silver works really well uh, just another tip if you've got a heavy miniature I just stick an old penny underneath and just glue that under there and that gives the model some weight to it so it doesn't fall over so easily when you're playing games but just that classic Necron style that I've gone for very very quick this is the fastest army I've ever painted and yet the effect I think still looks really good so I'm going to be showing you exactly how to achieve this technique right just running over the colours that you'll need it's not many for Necrons the base colours would be the snot green moot green or the old scorpion green sunburst yellow codex grey skull white and then the Chaos Black washes, just two washes, Badder Black and Griffon Serpia and then for Metallics Chainmail, Mithril Silver and the new Hashak Copper which was formerly Dwarf Bronze that's all the colours you need for my Necron colour scheme Now in preparation for the Necron Wraith, this is how it starts I've already made a start on this one. Uh, the base has been done, the model's been constructed, and then on the base it's just a mix of uh, sand and the Games Workshop basing kit. Just apply with PVA glue. And then when that's dried, I've sprayed the base using the dark grey that I've been using from Montana. And a lot of you have been asking about that. The old the old spray was called steel grey I think that's out of production now you can't get a hold of it but the same shade is in a new range that they've done it's the uh, Montana gold range and the name of the new spray is called stealth and the code is 7070 I use that in all the bases it's a nice dark grey I don't like using black grey gives you a nice colour for the basing and it's a good colour to work up from it's easy to shade and it's not as strong as black then to give you a head start on the miniature on the Necrons I then spray the whole thing uh, using the chain mail I think it's called plate mail and that is by army painter sprays and you can just spray the whole miniature I use a tissue and wrap up the grey base and then spray the silver the plate mail and then take the tissue away and then what's left I just paint over using the Games Workshop chain mail and that gives you the miniature already done with the basing shaded and the first coat already done it'll save you hours of painting all the silver just buy the spray and it'll save you lots of time and then just on the miniature here you can see here I've just applied some of the dwarf bronze or hashat copper as the new colour is. Other than that the miniature is ready to go and to start painting. Now for the basing on the Necron that's just the base has been sprayed with the stealth grey and then it's highlighted the sand and stones are highlighted using codex grey and then a final highlight of a little bit of codex grey and some skull white just to highlight 
all the stones there, and then a wash of Griffone Serp in all, in all of the cracks, and that will add some depth. And that's really the basing finished. It's just the standard basing I do on all of my 40k units. And then when the miniature's finished, we'll then add some some flock to finish it off. Right, first colour I do is the snot green. We're just on the first stage, which is base colours. So you get all your base colours done, and then third stage is washes, and then final highlights on the third stage. Always those three stages are painting. So you want the base colours done. It's snot green. Any areas that you want to be crystals, we're just applying the green, so here. Stabbing on, making sure you get the green all the way around. Try and be neat on this at this stage to get it right. And then you can see underneath. We're going to make this look like an eerie green colour as we build up the layers later on. But just to start off with, it's just this plain it's not green. Make sure you work it in there. And then I put it on these. Make sure you get all the way around. And then you also want to put it on these cables. Let it run. Also on these orbs. It's a little bit tedious, takes a while. There's quite a lot of green to do on these reefs. But yeah. Get on there. And you want to be neat at this stage. Any mistakes, just quickly remove the a state bowl using a watery brush to remove the paint. Now just on the miniature here you are using the Chaos Black mixed with the chainmail and I've applied it just on the lower uh, cable here, the one with the ribs in it just underneath there and there and there and that's just the Chaos Black mixed with the chainmail just to give it that dark Darker look, so that's where it can be applied on the on the reefs. And any other that, on any of the other Necron miniatures, you can apply it to any of the dark looking cables as well. Oh, well, that's the green finished. It takes quite a while. There's a lot to do. You see that I put green on the orbs here. They're running down the tail around. Make sure you just get it all all the way around. Uh, put it on the cables running underneath on the head here as well and then underneath and then underneath you can see just underneath here on all the orbs there and the centered orb in the chest and then on top just on the orbs on the spine here as well and just at the top of each claw there's a like a crystal on top there as well, so there's quite a bit to do, easy to, easy to miss parts. As I mentioned earlier, go on my video showcase of each Necron and you'll see exactly where to paint all of the green. It's your base colour, take your time doing it and make sure you get it all correct. As, because other than that, the base colours are now finished on this Necron and you're ready to move on to the next step. Right, well, the next stage on the miniature is washes. This is stage two. And it's the same wash over the entire miniature. We're just going to take some bad black and apply it to the entire miniature. Taking a large brush, this is a wash brush. And then we just apply that to the miniature. And it's important that you work the wash into all of the cracks. And again, fast technique. Just applying it over the whole of the miniature. Make sure you work it into all of the cracks I've said. 
working your way down the miniature. Fill in all the gaps. Don't let it flood too much, but just you can use the brush to stab a little bit just to make sure that the wash goes in to all of the cracks there. So you're just watching the miniature, looking out for air bubbles that form, and then just working it through with the bristles. Filling in these gaps and you add or take away as much wash as you want depending on the depth. I try not to flood it too much but I still want it to look nice and deep. This will pick out all the shading for you. Turn it around to the head. Work it right in under the arm there. You want to shade the deep crevices as much as you can and it's fine. You can put it all over the green as well. It'll shade all the green for you also. And then working up inside the miniature. Maybe paint these three at a time is good. It's quicker if you do it in batches. You do one stage and you get faster at doing each miniature as it comes along. Necron Warriors, I think I painted them in batches of ten. Maybe and just kept them going. They're easy to come back to to do a wash or do a colour and leave them and just do a little bit each time and they soon get finished get quick results with the Necrons, you use up quite a lot of wash but it's doing all the hard work for you just working, making sure you work all that colour into the miniature that'll come up looking great, it's fine but it's important that you probably the first thing you want to shade is Right in all the cracks to make sure that's done. You don't want to miss a stage. And then just all around the orbs here as well. So the black shades the metal and it shades the green for you. Right, well that's the washes done. Just one wash, the better black applied all over the miniature, making sure you worked it all into uh, the cracks there. Right inside here is an area to make sure you get in between here and then up around the neck area make sure you fill all of that in in between the cracks behind all needs to be done and then running around the towel but that is the whole miniature washed in that colour very fast technique that's the end of stage two now we'll be moving on to the final highlights stage all right here's a miniature i've been working on Already this one's dried, you need to let, make sure that all of the wash has dried on the miniature. And the first colour to do will be chain mail. Now with the chain mail, you want the paint quite thin. You don't want blobby paint, but you don't want it too thin, you want it just nice. Nice um, damp brush, I'm going to use a base coat brush, one that's not too big. Nice tip to it, and we'll use that. And basically you're going to run the brush over the panels just making sure you're going to run the brush over the panels nice solid colour and when you come to detail then you just run the brush over the top and because it's sculpted in nice and deep the brush should skip over the top of that and it's nice and quick I found with this you don't have to be too fussy. You just run it over. The paint's quite nice and thin. And it's going on just nice there. It's handy to keep the batter black open at this stage of the wash. And when you as you're painting on, if you see an area that you've missed with the wash, then just fill it in as it comes up, as you see it with the batter black. There will be areas that the wash hasn't covered. So you just fill those in with better black and then move on. Back to the chain mail, we're just running it over the main panels of the miniature. I don't really touch the centre there, I leave it shaded, don't really need to interfere. It's the main panels that need to be gone over again. That looks good. There's a lump there, I'm just going to remove that. 
with his finger now. That's better. Just running the brush over the miniature. You can see it there compared to the other side. Nice solid colours here and the wash on the other side. As I said, don't worry about the the fine detail too much. It's the main panels you want to do. And you just run in the brush. If you have just enough paint on the brush to cover, but not too much that it ends up filling up the cracks. You're just being neat. Just the main bits. I mean you could paint here and here, but it's there's no need, it's just the main bits that stand out. You want to paint and just leave the rest. The shading's done most of the work for you. Along the top here. If you use a fine brush then you're tempted to take too long and you end up spending a long time. Large brush, it's quick coverage. I'm still trying to be neat. Just showing you that it doesn't take too long. Once this colour's done, you're over halfway through the miniature, you're well on the way to finishing it off. Because that detail is sculpted in there, the brush just runs over the top of it and it doesn't fill in the cracks as long as you don't use too much paint. And this area here on the back is the main part that seems it's worth getting that bit right. Now look what I've done there. I've applied too much silver and it's gone into the crack there. If I take a damp brush and just put the bristles in there and remove that mistake. Or you can let it dry and reshade, it's up to you, but that's, that's fixed that quick. Now when you come to the towel, again, make sure you've got the right amount of paint on the brush. Not too much, not too little, and then you're just running it along the detail. So you could paint, paint each individual band, it'd take you ages, or just with the right amount of paint on the brush. You just skim it over the top, and that will still pick out all the detail for you. And then on the larger panels as well, just the same technique again, running up the middle, fast results. And on these bits, I'm actually going to paint them Make sure I catch them Right, the chainmail's done, takes a while But all underneath has been done and picked out The face, the towel, claws, all the panels on the claws here And then along on the back of the miniature as well Now after that, the next colour is Mifful Silver and you're looking to pick out just the highlights of the miniature it just adds an extra shade and it just makes the panels more solid because if you've slightly missed areas with the chainmail on the main panels then the miffle silver will cover up the last of the mistakes but be selective you don't have to paint I don't paint all the areas that I've gone over in in the chainmail it's just the highlight the final extreme highlights. I'll put it on the main panels here but not everywhere so I'll run along the main panel don't have to worry about it being too thick this time it just covers that nice and this one, this shade will be quicker you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but I do, it just makes the panel look a bit more solid. And then just, I just ran along the tips of the spine net. 
run out longer than that. That'll do. Leave all that. I'll just paint the tip of this spike at the end. That'll do. And then I'm going to put it on the face here. Just to help that stand out. Nice and solid. That's good. And then I'm on the claws here, just the top panel is splits in two on either side. I'm just going to put it on the top one. Just on the outside edge. There. And really, once you've done this, that's most of the work done. It's handy as well because you're going over the miniature a second time. And any areas that you miss, look, I missed these bits here. Then the Miffle Silver will just cover them up. It's just a double check as well, which is handy enough. So that's all you take. Silver's done. On the miniature. Right, next colour is the hash up copy. You're just looking to highlight the areas that you've already done in the base colour. So you take some hash up copper, mix that with a little bit of Miffle Silver to give you a lighter shade and then just run that over the top one two three four and then over the top they're sculpted so well you just run the brush over like that and it just picks them out right now so all your metallics are done and you can see the miniatures coming along really well and all that's left still is a little bit of shading with a wash and the green. So whilst I'm waiting for this metal to completely dry, we'll do the green. So you take the snot green again, same base colour that you started with, and you're just repainting, repainting the green. It's worth doing, and um, but you're just leaving the shaded areas this time. See, and that's all nicely shaded and ready for you to build up with the lighter shades. So we just run that in there. Again, you want to be neat at this stage, but you can see that the little detail has been picked out for you, so you just run the brush in the middle of the area. That's faster now. That's that, that looks good. And you're just running over. Now these orbs on the side, exactly the same, you're just leaving the shaded area and just painting the main part of the orb. Solids all the way around and then around on the other side Inside there That looks good now My area is that gonna look Like crystals I'll show you on a finished miniature here you see on the Here you want to leave You want to leave the top left in the dark shade top left in the dark shade and that will help these white spots stick out even more so I'll show you on here take the green so you paint bottom right around and then the last third on the top left you don't touch so you paint here and then the top left you leave dark and that will help the white spots stick out. So it's the same on the small areas where it's a bit harder. But you want to try the same on there. And then underneath these, and I'm going to paint those like crystals as well. So it's just bottom right you're going to paint. Leave the top left every time. And this is one of the longer miniatures. One of the miniatures that takes longer to paint. So you can imagine how quick you can move through other units like Necron Warriors, for example. There's not much green on them at all and you're able to move pretty quick. Right, that's the green done. The orbs you've picked out, I've painted these as orbs, not as not as uh, crystals, you just paint all over for those here. Um, I've re gone over the little cables, green cables that run just inside there, just run over them again and then underneath. It's all done, takes a while again, but that moves you on, that's a big stage completed. Next stage you want to highlight those, there's two techniques, I'll show you on a finished miniature here, 
you've got like a what I'm calling an, an orb here, like an, a, it looks like an electrical kind of finish here. You want it to look sort of a cloudy electrical storm there in the middle. And then also you've got the crystal effect, which has a highlight on the bottom right and then a sort of a glint of white on the top corner. So it's, you're going to do both of those at the same time. And you can see that orb effect, like a glowing orb fading out to darker green. So the first stage is just the moot green or scorpion green. You want a thin brush, keeping it damp and the paint nice and damp. You don't want it thick and blobby. Small amount of paint and it's bottom right. You're looking just to roll the brush around. Bottom right. I'm taking some paint off and just to just trying to fade it out a little bit because it's noticeable on there. You can use a bit of water not too much but that's faded just a little it looks better and then any small ones bottom right it's hard and I'm just going to try and touch it in there that looks fine so that's the how you do the crystals it's bottom right and just roll it around like that bottom right roll it around one two three Four, five, six. And you see how that moot green it really brings the green out. A really helpful colour in lifting that away from the metal. You've got two colours going on there, the metal effect and this eerie alien green colour. Now for the orbs, taking a slightly wetter brush, it's hard getting the balance right, but you want a bit of wet inside the brush there. And then take some green here, yeah. and you're looking to paint the orb, but then when the paint gets a bit watery, that's when you fade it into the darker green. So it's a wet a wet green just to fade it, not solid. You can see it there, just a wet green, and then a stronger green over the top of that faded in. That gives you your two tones there, and that looks pretty good. So, wetter green. wetter green if you want that cloudy effect then once the wetter green is done nice solid mint green fading it in now for the orb here in the chest we want to run we want it to make a little bit sort of electrical and swirling effect so you take the thinner green again quite watery not too watery, just trying to get it just right. And you're just zigzagging. Running a few zigzags like this. So you zigzag with the brush, zigzag. Around, zigzag. Now you see that zigzag effect and they're more solid right in the middle. So you fill in the middle a bit more. So you've got solid colour in the middle and then like a zigzag effect fading off in each direction so that adds to help to the swirl effect and that will be more emphasised when you do the final shade on the green here. Now on the cables, the green cables that run up by the claws, just finish paint and you just run it along like that. Run it along the edge. You don't have to paint the whole thing, just paint an edge. Just highlights it a little bit. That'll do. Not watery, don't want it too watery. So you find, find the edge and then just run the brush along. And for the orbs on the tail, again, watery brush. Run over the whole thing. 
Okay, wall tree just fading in between that darker green and then solid in the middle just to finish it off. So painting these as crystals so we're just going bottom right to highlight these and then we want that swirly electrical effect on these so we, you're zigzagging zigzagging across it's basically so there's gaps in between and then just solid around the top so that green's done paint still on this central orb here just around the cables there, on the face and the chest, and on all of the orbs as well. So that's finished. The final highlight for this one is moot green. Then we want to mix it with some of the yellow. Mix it with some of the yellow, sunburst yellow. And then just to strengthen it a little bit, some a little bit of white. Because the yellow pigment's not very strong, so the white, just adding a bit of white will lift the colour. And that gives us our final shade, keeping it nice, quite nice and thin. With the water, not too thin. And then that's just for finishing off the orbs. That's just an extreme highlight, and you sort of blotch it on. You want to fade it out from the middle. It's the very last highlight. So a blotchy effect will look quite good. It will still let some of the previous highlight shine through. You're just at the very edge now of the highlight. And that makes the colour really glow. So you've got a glowing green effect now and it lifts that green right out from the metal so it adds a lot of depth and effect to the miniature and when the armies combine you've got all this glowing green everywhere it looks really effective so that's the orbs done and then for the for the orbs with the zigzags in them just a bit of just blotching it creates that depth that looks green don't need to worry about the highlights here on the crystals. You can put a little bit on any big crystals like the one on the face here. Just add a bit more depth, that looks good with a little bit more extra highlight there. Um, but just the orbs mainly. Uh, this one in the middle here, just a final cross in the middle and that lifts that right out. On the spine here, again just blotched at a very extreme highlight. That will add a nice lot of depth. The last stage for the green here is to take a brush of a nice tip and grab a little bit of white on the end of the brush, just a small little ball, and put down a white speck, a circle. Now I, on a larger crystal I go for one larger one and then a smaller second one. Like that. That looks f good. And then it's fiddly, there's a very fine one here. Just want to drop one. Drop. And then one drop on. There, that looks fine. That looks good. And then underneath, top left hand corner. One drop. And that brings that crystal to life. Keep washing the brush out. You don't want the white paint to get clogged. And then a thin one we're just picking out. Top left corner of each of these as well.
like the rave's almost completely finished now. You've picked out all the green, you can see all that effect now. Looking really nice underneath, the orbs look good, all glowing. You see the face there, all picked out with the orbs there. On the back, it's looking good. Now, Necrons are meant to be an ancient race, and to make the metal look a little bit older, I'm just going to take a medium sized brush, base coat brush, and Griffon Serpia, just to add a little bit of rust to the miniature. A really good effect. So you load some up on the brush, and you just want it to work it into the corners. So on the panelling here, I'll just push it in to the corner there. And then a little bit, add some to the cracks here. And then I'll run some in on all the deep crevices there, down the middle. And that rust really, really helps a good effect to run into the cracks there. You can see now I've run it into the panelling there. Just running it down in the in the cracks on the tail. In the last parts of the panel. So you can go, you can use as much as you want, go over, go over the top as much as you want. I just run it in a little bit just to add a bit of an aging effect to the miniature. And then on the spine, I'll just run it down there like that. Down and then down the side there. And then a little bit in between. The orbs there, it doesn't have to be too neat between the orbs. Griffon soap is perfect, it's not too strong, it's just enough to give you a bit of shading. Now I'm making sure that I work the shading into the again right up inside the miniature there. Just working it in there. You you apply the rust effect where you want it to be most visible, it's up to you how you want the miniature to look. You don't have to add rust, you could add another shade, like a, a purple or a green, or if you want to experiment with other colours, but I want mine just to look like rusty metal. Not too over the top, but ancient enough looking. That looks good. Nice and quick. And this miniature is very nearly finished. Just going to add a little bit more shading. If you want more depth to the rust effect, then let the first coat dry, it'll take a while, and then go in for a second application that will make the wash look stronger. I'm just looking to add some in between here, in between the spine, and that is about it, yeah, just a little bit on the towel, and that is finished. So that's the effect there, you see you've got a slight rusty effect now, all around the miniature, that looks great. So that is the miniature finished, I had a little bit of flock, uh, my basing scheme is like abandoned city so it's grey faded but because the city is abandoned there's rock, uh, there's uh, grass uh, growing around in patches so I'm going to add a few patches of grass to the base. So just an old uh, brush, a bit of PVA glue and then just a few dots around. Now you should apply this when the rest of the ink and paint has dried so that you don't get flux sticking to your paint as it's drying. But uh, that will do. And that's the basing finished. The entire miniature is finished now. The whole roof's done. You can see him, all the armour. base looks good. It's all shaded. And he's ready. So varnish, I use Army Painter Matte Varnish. It's about the best. Now, got to be a bit careful. It doesn't react too well to metallic paints. It can make them start to run a little bit. So if you're going to spray metallics with the Army Painter Matte Varnish, spray on a very, very light coat first. A tiny amount, gently over the miniature. Even if you don't get full colour, just a small amount. Let that dry completely. And then apply another thin layer. And that shouldn't disrupt metallic paint too metallic paint too much. But that's the uh, Necron Row finished. As I mentioned earlier, look at my showcase videos, you'll be able to see how I've applied this exact technique to all of the other Necron units that I have in my army. I can show you a few. So I can show you how I've applied the technique to a few other Necron units. This is Necron Ghost Dark. 
and it's just the same technique over the entire miniature. You've got uh, that same effect on the orb that's there at the back, orbs there at the front, and then if you can see here, I've painted like a globe with a grid, and that's just using the same highlighting technique, but a neat effect there to get that uh, grid effect on the miniature. But uh, the same highlighting and shading, and then as I mentioned earlier on the uh, on the boosters here, just a mixture of the chainmail and black, and then sort of a skim highlight with a large brush, very gentle highlight of chainmail, just to pick out the detail. Same on the on the guns on the side here, but you could see that overall effect on the miniature. Really mechanical looking machine, and then that green adds to that alien effect, and I think that looks really good. Now I can also show you on the night side here, just the same, the solid panels, and then just put in the washes, that rust effect wash in between the cracks here, same effect. And you're using solid black as a background to put your transfers on, that's how I do them on my Necrons there and then underneath. You can see the same technique applied. But uh, check out my showcase videos. You'll see exactly how each unit's painted. Mm -hmm.